A recent study claimed vegans have more bone fractures. Is this true? Uh, this was done originally in the year 2009. And uh, Applebee's group did it. And what they looked at is they looked at British vegans and they found that they had an increased risk of fracture. And by the way, they've carried this study out and it was just recently republished and uh, found that vegans had uh, more fractures. Well, it turns out if you look at the groups carefully that the vegans were strong and healthy and active and so on. And the kinds of fractures they had are the kinds that you get from uh, activity, not the kind that you get from having osteoporosis, which are hip fractures. They had no more hip fractures. They got the kind that you get when you fall down, you break your wrist or uh, ride your bicycle and break you know, a bone and so on. So I believe that's the reason. I went through a, a very thorough discussion of that particular study when it was originally done in 2009. Those of you who are interested in seeing my words on this, you can look at my, uh, one of my 2009 newsletters and you will, you will you know, you'll get my full analysis of this work. And it's contrary to what we see worldwide. What we see worldwide as far as hip fracture rate, which is hip fracture is the most serious complication of osteoporosis. That's the one you really want to avoid. You know, not, not you know, we want to avoid fractures of the wrist, et cetera. But those, as I said, are most related to falls. So if you look at the worldwide uh, incidence of hip fractures, what you find is that in rural countries like in Africa or Asia that were once, you know, rec until recently underdeveloped, uh, and they eat a starch-based diet, you know, rice in Asia, millet in Africa, corn in Africa. Uh, what they find is that there's no osteoporosis. I mean, that was up until recently. The diet's changed in these countries. You know, it was rare to non-existent. Papua New Guinea, where 92% uh, of their diet was sweet potato leaves and root, roots. No osteoporosis, no hip fractures. And as you increase your uh, calcium intake, which is, I think, incidental, it's mainly an increase in protein intake worldwide. You go up to countries like Norway, Sweden, United States, Canada, New Zealand, et cetera. You see a progressive increase in hip fractures. Hip fractures are what counts. An increased risk in hip fractures worldwide in countries as they increase their animal protein intake, which, by the way, coincidentally, they also increase their calcium intake. I got to look at the whole picture, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, these kinds of studies uh, get a lot of attention because now I don't have to be a vegan. People love to hear good news about their bad habits. And if somebody comes along and say, hey, being a vegan is going to give you more fractures or give you B12 deficiency, go, oh, thank goodness I can eat my pork chops. Yeah. Or my chicken or my beef steaks, you know, just absolutely whatever. That's the way people are, you know, they love to hear good news about their bad habits. Are all whole grains okay to eat? Are there any exceptions? For example, some grains like wheat, barley, and oats have gluten, but quinoa, millet, amaranth, teff, buckwheat, and wild rice have no gluten. Right. Should we try to eat the grains with no gluten? Well, unless you have uh, celiac disease, which is very rare. It occurs in fewer than one in 100 people and probably fewer than one in 250 people. But that's a serious condition. That's where you can't digest gluten. As a result, you get celiac disease or, and or dermatitis epitiformis. And uh, those people need to stay away from wheat, barley, and rye. But most people don't. And that's a problem because there's an awful lot of attention placed on gluten. And you go to the store, maybe 30, 40% of the packaged foods advertise no gluten. And so the dieter's attention is on gluten. Well, I told you how rare it is in, in, in real life. So you got all these people focused on gluten. And that's not the problem. The problem is the animal foods. It's the livestock. It's the chickens and the cows and the pigs. Because they're what's making people sick. And besides that, it's a dangerous disaster to focus on gluten because we ignore the main cause of planetary destruction, which are the livestock. Planet Earth will burn in hell before, you know, before people realize that they have to focus on the livestock. They can't be focused on GMOs. 
they can't be focused on gluten because these are just minor issues. So livestock is killing you and the planet. Where do you stand today in terms of fat? Many respected authors and doctors recommend whole food plant-based fats, such as avocados, raw seeds, raw nuts, and olives. What do you think? Well, I'm pretty sure it's not a good idea. I've spent my career trying to keep people away from fat. At the very least, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. So if you're going to eat a a high-fat diet, if it's nuts and seeds or avocado oil or whatever, you're going to end up storing that fat around your belly. Plan on it. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. Uh, These fats also have some uh, pharmacologic properties. If they happen to be in the omega-3 direction, then what they do is they suppress the immune system and they cause bleeding. And uh, suppressing the immune system results in more more infections and more cancers. So uh, they can have some very negative effects. You can bleed to death taking these omega-3 fish type fats or I suppose you take flaxseed omega-3 fats, you can bleed to death. Now, if you err on the size of omega-6 fats, which were of course uh, very, very prominent once in the form of corn oil, but lots, I'd have to look them up, but lots of grains uh, hit the omega-6 fats kind of hard, and so do various vegetable oils. Then you're dealing with a toxin that actually causes more damage to the arteries than does animal fat. So, you know, these are pharmacologically active substances, these oils are. And in general, they're not healthy for you. Now, as far as saying a um, a diet uh, which adds uh, extra avocado, extra nut oils, et cetera, to the basic low-fat diet that I've tested, that Dean Ornish has tested, that Walter Kempner has tested, that dozens of researchers throughout history have tested, to say that you're going to take this low fat, no added oil diet, and you're going to add nuts and seeds to it based on what? Certainly not the kind of experience that we've had. And you, what you're doing is you're cherry picking some of the literature. Yes, you are. And uh, maybe, maybe you think that you can get to the top of the pile by attacking people as famous as Dean Ornish or uh, Codwell Esselstyn. Maybe you think that's the way to the top of the pile, but hey, hey, you got to, well, you got to do the work. Yeah, you got to do the research. You got to see the patients. You got to understand the bulk of the science literature, not that just the cherry picked articles that you decided to tell the public about.